Shalom, la b'chayarim, shalom yashallah. Peace be to the election of the nation of Israel, which consists of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, those whom are a part of that elect number, whom are chosen and called and will receive of that thawa, which is the mark of exemption from the coming judgment. 144,000 Hanabiyayim, the prophets, and of course the rest of the one third, which is the multitude, men, women, and children, which are believers in the words of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. To you, I say Shalom. Wa ka halayim la alahayna wa Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rachakodash, all praises to our power, Yahweh, which is the Heavenly Father's name in the Hebrew, his only name in the Paleo Hebrew, in the Lashwan Kodash. And his only begotten son's name is Yahweh Shai, who dwelt in the of Jesus Christ. By Hashem, mean in the name, because we have to go through the mediator Yahweh Shai to get to the Father. By Hashem, Rechakodash, is in the name of the Holy Spirit. And of course, um, we utter this in the Paleo Hebrew, always, of course, because we are back to our heritage being Hebrew Israelites. And of course, only do calling on the names of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai is their salvation for us Israelites. Okay? There's lights, of course, no matter what you look like. Of course, it's the spirit that bear witness with every spirit that we had a chosen the power. Okay, so this isn't a thing about what you look like. It's a thing about the spirit that is within you. Okay. And of course, I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles that great millstone who were well. And peace and salutation to the election. Shemiah Mafa, my name is Mafa Mayan from the great millstone Godweller Machana. Or the God Wallow or Cub, Great Millstone, Machana, which is Camp, Great Millstone Camp, Baha, I, Yar, I mean the city of uh, Philadelphia, coming again with another Lamadium Ma'it, a teaching little, and a Rechakodash in the Holy Spirit, Ma'amath of Truth. This one is to cover the whole coming famine. Which, um, there's places that are actually in a scarcity of food, but this is going to come globally and ultimately impact America, in which this place is the most prudish nation and will fall the most and to the point when the Lord actually is going to destroy it completely and leave it as a memory, a memorial for what he had to get for being wicked. And so, you have here, Congressman warns of a global food crisis. Every need, everyone basically will say, needs to be aware of this. And, of course, you need to be aware of this because the times that we're in, it, prepare, it requires to be prepared, to be well prepared. Meaning spiritually to be well prepared To know and take knowledge of the days that you're in Being circumspect Okay And measure the time diligently in itself And Because many have not received These different um, Revelations and such And Many just Go on and With the Breton Circus Which is given out to you With the Um this, this whole Roman system, which they give you nothing but entertainment and rich food, in which this is actually going to attack your rich food, all of the meats and such, which you're going out to eat, and also other crops. But this particular lesson, we're going to speak about the meats, cover a particular precept in the book of Habakkuk. So first, I want to start with this scripture, which is the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 7 to 25. And it says here, it says, Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Matazarim of Egypt, and this is speaking about the Israelites who came out of, I of Egypt, or Matazarim being oppressed by another dark nation, which is the uh, Matazarim are so called Egyptians of Ham, which is our Ham or Ham, so called um, Africans. Right? And you have it that it's Egyptians or Matazarim 
all right, of Egypt double straits unto this day. I have set unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. So it says here that the Lord, he sends, he sends, of course, his prophets. He has always sent to the prophets, okay? To give the warning out there, okay? To blow the trumpet, to raise the alarm unto the Israelites of coming dangers, which is foreseen because the prophets there, of course, the visionaries, all right, as also called seers, which we'll get that right now. Okay, let me see if I can find a particular scripture that I want. Speaks about calling them seers. Yeah, this is at First Samuel chapter or Shamuel Allah, um, chapter nine and nine. It says, "Before in Israel, when a man went to inquire to the Most High, thus he spake: Come and let us go to the seer, for he that is new called a prophet was before tame, before tame called called a seer." Okay, so when a man, of course, went to inquire to to the power. Okay, which you go into the rosh, which is an inquire, to seek, right, to consult, okay, to inquire. You, you have, of course, they would go through the prophets, okay, things, of course, in order and such. So you have it that the prophets in, in, at a time... Before time were called seers, which a seer, when you read it in the, in the, you have it here, right here. You got here, this reading here. I'd, let me see what you got. I'd, ha, ra, kaya, for, la, nabaya. Which is got two, I believe this means prophet. Nabaya, ha, yawam, the day. Ya, korah, he called. La, pun, yum, which that means two. And then pun, yum, that deals with being in face or before. Alright. Before time, right? And it says. Ha-ra'a, which ha-ra'a, the word ra'a in Hebrew, it means to see, okay? To look or perceive, to consider, to observe. Okay, so the prophets, they can see. And where the people have no vision, the people perish. So we have the vision. We can see what the Lord is going to bring upon this place. Okay, that's what we do as prophets, which a prophet, he just declares what is going to happen before it happens. Obviously being, are receiving that from the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh, All right, so we're telling you about the, the, the famine. Let's just get into it. Without further ado, we're going to watch this actual video. Some of the different parts we'll skip a bit and choose, but the whole video is good or tawab. Uh, I'm a large animal veterinarian and I've practiced for 30 years. This is something that all Americans need to be aware of. The word we heard is over half a, half a billion have died. We've never seen anything like that. And so because of that, we have this huge hole in the meat protein global supply chain. Um, so we're, we, we're now in the recognition phase of them realizing the magnitude of the problem. Um, and again, this is something, it's a national security risk, it's a food security risk, and this is something that we need to be very vigilant, not just as people in government, but as consumers. So the issue not is, is there a problem? The issue is, what do we do about it?
something we're starting to see more and more news coverage of and we're, we're beginning to recognize is that in 2020, we're expecting a major protein shortage globally. And this, this shortage started with a virus called the African swine flu. It started off in um, Africa, went up to the Balkans. And it's also spread to Vietnam. And most of Asia now is dealing with the problems of African swine fever. Cut across Russia to Asia. That whole area is infected with African swine fever. And so, and it's highly contagious. It can be found in food and, and, and water. And it, it, it just, once it gets going, it's really, really hard to contain it. It's a very stable virus that can be transported in feed in products that come from an Asian country that's affected, it can come here. So when people buy those pig ears in the stores, whether it's a supermarket, a pet supply store, or offline, that can harbor African swine fever that comes into this country. And so we know it's gonna spread. We just wanna do every safeguard that we can. And the American consumers have a big um, hold on this, or they can really participate in this by not buying stuff that comes from an Asian country. And so China got this disease last August. It spread to almost every single province. It has caused China to lose over half of their pig population. They're reporting over 300 million sows have died. The word we heard is over a half, a, half a billion. Over 500 million pigs have, have died. It's got a high mortality rate of about 96%. Um, it's expected to hit as far down as Australia. The pandemic has wiped out more than 25% of the pigs or pork on, on planet Earth. I mean, it is a huge pandemic and it's, and it's been spreading fairly quickly. Uh, China has failed to maintain control over it, but it's... it's a now, so, as we kind of see, we see pestilence that's of course said yeah, being spread abroad and such and that of course is the Lord that's sending these different forms of pestilence and such in the place which he told he would do okay and this what we're speaking about is just the beginning of of, of, of sorrows and such this is in the book of 2nd Edges, chapter 16 and 18. It says, The beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear. The beginnings of evils, bad times, that's what evil means. What what shall I do when these evils shall come? This Ezra is asking himself, okay, being a man of the Lord, a prophet, okay, especially even being a prophet. That's seeing these visions in the time of when we had great stature, all right, with mighty men, all right, stronger, less effeminate than what we are in these days. Okay, you have a uh, man that is a um, of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Shai, masculine. Okay, is even in fear. It says, "Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment, all right, as um, correction." That's why the Lord is sending. These different plagues and such. And I must note this as well with this precept. It's going to be the book of Psalms chapter 96. And verse 13 is the point. But I will begin at Verse 9, it says, Oh, worship Yahweh in his beauty and holy of holiness. Fear before him all earth. And the Lord the Lord is going to make this whole earth bow. Every knee shall bow. And, and, and I have to worship Yahweh by Shem El Shai. It says, Say among the heathen that Yahweh reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. That's of course how we do a son. How a shy is going to judge the people righteous. You're going to be judged on based on, um, of course, uh, you have it with, um, the things you do, whether it's good or bad and such. All right, with us, we will be judged by, of course, our faith and our works and such. Okay. It says, "Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad, the sea and let the sea war in the fullness thereof." 
Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. And of course, when the Lord bring forth this judgment, when it of course gets replenished, this earth, when the Lord rains down these various fire brimstone, which is in the form of nuclear missiles and also the form of the chariots, the so-called UFOs or aerial phenomenons, which are the chariots of salvation for the elect. Okay. And then destruction and a curse onto the wicked. Okay. It's going to be a very joyful day because then we're going to have a place that actually a earth that is in its fullness. Okay. You have it that the, the curse of Cain. All right. It was, um, that the, the earth wouldn't uh, yield its uh, full fullness of it. All right, let's see. Let me see if I can find that. Maybe in like the book of Genesis. Let me see if I can find it. It says here in the book of Genesis. Chapter 4, and it says here, and this is after, of course, Cain, also known as really in the Hebrew, Koyan, I believe. Koyan in Hebrew, which goes into like being a spear, okay? Because <clears throat> he slew Abel, and then he, of course, said, Am I my brother's keeper? He's, he's wicked, and then he got a mark, which is he lost his pigment. Okay, got that mark putting on on. So this is what it reads. The point what I'm bringing out is this. And Genesis or Baba Ashiyah, they're in the headings or in the beginnings. Chapter 4 and 12. It says, And when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her, unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And so, you know, the earth itself isn't it yielding. Okay. Which when you go into that word for yield is mean the thun, which that means give, to give. To set or put. Okay, isn't it giving to its full strength? And of course, you have Esau, he cultivates and he does all types of sorts of wicked practices where he doesn't, of course, regard um, uh, the beasts and such, the cattle and such. So all of the Lord seeing these wickedness and such, the Lord has to bring them judgment upon uh, Babylon and Kalit, upon this world, okay, upon the wicked. Let me see if I can get this other preset. A lot of different I am beasts have been in a actual inhumane state, un immoral state, being a get fed all of the different and um, genetically modified feeds feeds, and they given the actual um, grass, okay, being pasture raised and such. They're being cramped in all sorts of and terrifying conditions which puts a lot of stress upon them okay they fatten them up okay it's it, it's it's all wickedness okay so it says here proverbs chapter 12 and 10 it says a righteous man regardeth the life of his beast but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel all right so a righteous man one that is upright okay as it says here um righteous man and I was gonna see in the Hebrew. You got Taza Dayak. You got Napash, which I know that soul, Napash's soul. Yah would die, which is uh, Yah would die, which means um, Yah die means knowledge or to know. All right. So you would know in regard. All right, if you're a righteous man, right? No regard, or regard, or no, I have knowledge. Tazadak, Nepash, soul, a righteous soul. And you have Ba Hamath, I said Ba Hamathwa, 
All right, which that goes into ba, bahama, or bahabath, or bahama. Yeah, which that is beast. Then you have wa, which at the end makes it his beast. All right. Yeah, but the wicked, the rishai, they're cruel. Okay. And so the Lord has to bring them judgment. Okay, this is a form of bringing them this judgment. Okay, by and. And now the Lord taking away all their food, you know, supplies and such with the famine, which is is kumi. Our rich is really, it's really, it's really here, but it's gonna really kick off, okay. And let me see, what was the other precept I wanted to get? I just had it in Psalms ninety six. Let me go back to it, Psalms ninety six, and we'll go back and then bring up some more information. And it says here before the Lord Yahweh, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Okay. So that's what the Lord is coming. He coming to judge the world, bring Mashapatim to this earth. Okay. With into this world in righteousness. Okay. And he has to, of course, punish Esau, punish the wicked. And such for their different things and bring forth what? Correction, amendments for them. Okay. So let's um continue forth in this video. And um as you see it has this different pestilence. It spoke of a, this different Af was African was it a um African swine fever, which um we we know that we don't Eat the the swine, which is pork. That's an abomination, as in the Leviticus the eleventh chapter speaks about the swine being unclean and not meat for us. Okay, it's not good for us. And you have it that is still a major food or protein for the masses of the people, in which the people eat pork and rely upon it. Especially you have is this like this speaks about in China and such. Okay, they rely on the pork as one of their major proteins because they regard um, beef and lamb and such as a food that is for, um, basically for, you say, in a more better situation economically and such. Rich food, as they would say. Okay, dainty. Right, so, um, the scriptures, it tells you about there being a famine in the Matthews, um, the 24th chapter, even, yeah, it was Yahweh Shai, or Lord. He spoke about this. He spoke about pestilence. This is Matthew 24 and 7. And it says, for nation shall arise against, shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and pestilence right there, pestilence. Alright, there's the different form of disease and such. Okay. In diverse places. Earthquakes in diverse places, that was. Alright, so that you have it. The, the, the pestilence. Okay, the famine. The, the, the pestilence and the famine go together. Alright, because it's working collectively. Alright, into bringing forth the will for you. How about Shem Shai? Okay. It's working for the good of you, what you, the Lord wants in his judgment. All right, so we're going to play some more. It's a hard uh, thing to get control over because it's it's constantly, just constantly spreading. Cambodia is the front line in a battle to halt the outbreak, which has ravaged pig herds across Asia, causing shortages and pushing up the price of pork by almost 40%. On Cambodian TV, pictures of another smuggling attempt, this time at night, but police were waiting. Smuggled meat is a big concern, but the disease can also be carried by ordinary travelers and truck drivers. Some pig herds in Cambodia are now infected, and the calling... So you can see even this, this different form of pestilence can be, uh, can be carried in various ways. And it says truck drivers, such the actual pig itself. Okay, so this is another way the Lord's going to bring down the population of the people. 
culling of thousands of animals has begun. Already millions have had to be slaughtered in China and Vietnam, while cases have also been discovered in Mongolia, Hong Kong and the DPRK. Banding the, uh, the border um, movement of pigs would be one of the things that, you know, uh, would be recommended, but okay, it would be so working only in principle uh, because of the porous border. In, in South Korea, they're, they're actually taking out uh, pigs with drones and snipers. They found an infected pig in the demilitarized zone between North Korea and South Korea, so we can bet that North Korea is heavily affected with the African swine flu at this point in time. So this is a an issue that is spreading and is wiping out pork across the planet. And what's happening is it's creating shortages elsewhere, but we're not quite noticing it yet. In Australia, for example, they had to have a lot of herd culling of cattle because droughts and other uh, climate issues that Australia has been having, the farmers have had to cull a lot of cattle. Their prices have been artificially maintained by the fact that China is having to buy more beef to offset the, the pork shortages that they're having. So, right. So you see it. So, you know, a lot of different things, you know, that are actually are occurring, damage is being done, struck, but um, people haven't seen the big hit as of yet. But it will happen, okay? And as the scriptures always tell you, have it or it has to tell you, have it because though it tarry, wait for it, so it surely shall come, all right? So, going back to that book of Ezra, it tells you about, um, it says, Behold, famine and plague, tribulation, anguish are sent as scourges for amendment, but for all they things, or all these things, they shall not. Turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of their scourges. Be behold, you know the various punishments and such. It says, "Behold, victual shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in a good case, and even then shall evils, bad times, grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion, and death, or great confusion." When you have it, you have different uh, prices that's new. You know, you people thinking that they can get things for a cheap price, pretty affordable, okay? And, you know, still can go to McDonald's and get you a Chinese and get you a pizza and such for cheap. But it's going to get you a takeaway and such. But there's going to come a time when you're going to see these prices and a skyrocket inflation and such. And you're going to be um, able to afford the things or you're going to have to think twice. You're going to have to... Um, rely on other um things okay and as i said you have it here since the pork is happening you have australia and they're actually importing beef okay boosted by china let me see australia beef exports boosted by china all right actually i think this is actually growth in exports to china so actually ex australian beef they're sending it also to china okay because they are actually lacking in beef or are they're lacking which is their primary port their primary port protein they eat is the pork. So, um, but since they have of course they've been impacted by this this virus, you have it they are you know important beef or exporting or getting the um, right are let me see. They're getting beef from Australia. Let me see, I have to read this just to be a hundred percent. Let me see something. Let me just check something. It says, according to Meat and Livestock, Australia figures China became Australia's top beef export destination for the first ever in July. Now, just so to check, import when you bring things in, you got export when it's going out. All right. So let me let me get a little bit of um info further. So China's been buying beef from Australia. It's expected that that oversupply coming from Australia is going to end in 2020, in which case, you know, where is China going to get their meat from? We don't, we don't really know. What we do know is that... Right, so you have it where Australia, you know, they, they of course, um, they have a, they're, they're, they're okay, but that's going to end. They have, a, as it, he had um, mentioned about um, 
over. Let me see. Let me get the actual term real quick. And in 2020, in which case, you know, where is China going to get their meat from? We don't, we don't really know. What we do know is that just in China alone, the amount of hogs that have been removed from the market will take three to five years to recover the, the herd sizes that they had. They have been trying to breed these astronomically huge pigs, 1,100 pound pigs. The reality is, is that to replace the, the herd sizes, Look, three to five years to replace these hurt size of these different um, livestock, all right? It would take three to five years from now, and this disease is becoming a global uh, pandemic. Here in the U.S., we're already seeing farmers take preventative measures against the African swine flu spreading there. It's definitely something to be concerned about with Australia running out of their oversupply of the beef oversupply. from culling their herds. We... Let me get that term for oversupply. So you have the term which is over supply. Which when you have oversupply. It's um let me see. Let's see, cow, let me see. You have more than enough, basically, abundance. Okay, so... Let me just get a simple definition, because this is acting stupid. Alright. Oversupply, supply, basically a surplus. Supply too much or too many. Supply and business. It says here, oversupply is an excessive amount of a product. Oversupply results when demand is lower than supply, resulting in a surplus. All right, so in Australia, they have what? Less demand if they, the beef, so they have a surplus. And then that oversupply may also be because the case of the producer completely misreading the market demand or the product. All right, you have it. You have to, of course, obviously... You know, the logistics and such, you have to, um, you know, take note of how much the consumer is actually buying, okay? Then you just have, you know, it's oversupply, but now you have it because of this, this famine of the pigs and such, China that is, and this is going to affect the world globally. And, and, and the point also, which I want to make, it's going to make is that it's not just, it's not going to affect just this protein this it's an unclean meat that is it's going to affect the other actual meats which you can consume as Israelites okay such as your uh, beef and your chicken and such all right so let's read more or right, we are starting to look at other resources of beef that will probably be impacted including the US China's are so the beef is going to be impacted too all right already been buying a lot more pork from the US and they're expected to buy a lot more beef. There are now you have it that also China is supplementing and by buying pork here from the, and, and bringing into there to make up for what they lost. Okay, in the midst of trade war, I <laughs> must note to read. Are a lot of articles out there talking about you know the the increased slaughter of dogs and rabbits in China to help make up for the protein deficiency. First of all, the Chinese have always eaten dog. Uh, they even have a dog meat festival. So and this is abominable. You can't even do that. All right, that's also, <laughs> you read in the book of Leviticus, all right, 11 chat there to tell you about that. Okay, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna keep it moving. All right, so I tell you the Moabites, obviously the heathen, they, you know, eat. And they eating dog, and they eating, of course, rodents too, you know, such as uh, you know rabbits and such. Okay, also just to to make sure they fill in for the pork that they're getting. 
So it's not an unusual thing for the Chinese to be eating dog. What we have to realize is that the beef is probably going to be impacted the most in 2020 because in China, eating beef and lamb are really, or sheep's meat, I guess what they call it, but those are signs of high class in their culture. So as beef kind of makes its way into the country, we're going to see a, a draw towards beef and, and sheep and lamb so that you know that's why of course and um, you, know, you see these uh, these abominable um yeah the heathen and such they um, feed you these uh pork you jake pork all right you're primarily you know by default you're getting a pork fried rice at the chinese and you get a chinese right because beef is in their mind is set as for high class, nobility and such. All right, you're doing the dainty. In China, because of the status that comes with it, if you if you eat it, you're of higher status there. I think that it's going to impact our beef market more than, than anything else, but they are eating more rabbit, they are eating more dog, uh, they're getting uh, chickens out of Ukraine. Ukraine seems to be benefiting from the chicken side. Australia seems to be benefiting from the cattle side. And like I said, Australia's surplus of cattle hitting the market is probably going to end going into 2020. I think that they're, they've culled a lot of their herds back in Australia. They'll probably go back to normal production next year. Right. So 2020 is only um, we only have a like, December. You, you have it January. So, 2020 is here, okay, no long. So, I'm, I'm going to skip, you can check out the rest of this. I'm going to skip it and get to around this and see what I got. Speak more about the beef and the other livestock, some other information I know, and then we're going to get another pre-7 closeout. The population of the pork industry has declined more than 25% over the past year, and it's accelerating. These are things that are going to affect our food supply. It already is affecting our food supply just with this one pandemic. Imports of pork, their imports of chicken, their imports of, of beef are just skyrocketing, and, and there's really no way that's going to change for the foreseeable future until they can rebuild their herd and hopefully find maybe a vaccine to never let this happen again. So this disease affects the, you know, the price of pork, but you're saying there's also an effect with the supply and demand dynamics for chicken and beef as well. Can you talk about that, please? Well, there's the psychological part, the psychological part of, I don't want to eat infected pork. You know, even though you say it's safe, I don't believe you. I'm just going to eat clean chicken, clean beef, clean fish, and I'll wait around for this problem to be solved. There's that part. The other part is there's not enough pork in the world for them to import to cover the gap. So in order for them to actually fill the gap, they're going to have to reach out to other meat proteins to handle the total problem. So it's an all-in meat protein co connectivity issue, not just pork. Uh just going to bring, because of that, and that demand and such, that's going to leave a scarcity, okay? Because as you say, to bring back up these cattle number, it take three to five years to get these different cattle livestock numbers back up, all right? They're hard to be built. And Yahweh Ratzah, we didn't have that much time, as you can see by the prophecies. You know, Yahweh Ratzah, it's all Yahweh by Shemiah Shai is at will, but you know, as we see these prophecies, you know, things don't look that good, right, for the foreseeable future as prophecies will tell you okay we're telling you about Fabio. we're telling you about great evils okay um and again this is something it's a national security risk it's a food security risk and this is something that we need to be very vigilant not just as people in government but as consumers 2020 we can expect the beef prices to go up because they're going to be a main substitute to pork uh, chicken is likely going to go up because chickens all, already kind of been a substitute to pork in China, especially you know, chicken and pork have been at the lower end of uh, the meat industry. Now you're starting to see rabbit and dog pick up a little more over there to kind of help spread the gap. But it is going to spread the gap uh, as well on the protein resources between the wealthy and the poor because that those mid-range resources, chicken and pork, are dwindling. Uh, chicken's not dwindling, but pork is dwindling. So you're starting to see a, a gap it just in what people eat between um, between the rich and the poor. But this pork 
pandemic is going to, like I said, it's going to affect beef, it's going to affect chicken, it's going to affect everything that we eat uh, protein wise because they're going to have to start substituting what protein they're losing from not having a pork with other protein resources. So it's a cascading effect that we'll start to see here in 2020. Uh, Smithfield Foods has warned about the pandemic hitting the U.S. They've warned about the coming uh, pork shortages, and they've also warned that it's going to cascade over into other meat industries, as we know it already is globally. And this is right. So the, the short issues due to this whole African um, was it swine fever is going to impact the other you have clean meats and such. Okay. For, for us, speaking about us, the Israelites. All right. So, it's of course get that. Of course, yeah, you take heed in the, in the in the scriptures. It speaks about this. And in the book of Habakkuk three and seventeen, it says, "Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive tree of the olive shall fail, and the 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 field." Shall give no meat. Yeah, the different crops, and you know, I, I'll do another lesson on that. I brought this out at comp, and it's just uh, and we have to keep slamming these prophecies heavy, as a broken record and such. Mm. You have it where. You know the the different um, damage that's been done to the the different um, uh, you have the the grain belt and such, um. Here, you know, in the Midwest and the different areas, due to the, the wet weather, the snowstorms and heavy rainfall, you know, keeping moisture into these uh, fields and such, and they letting these uh, crops um, prosper. Right, the harvest season is over. <laughs> okay. I, I believe I'm going to do that lesson again. Well, that lesson for the next one. That, you know. But, it says, I'm going to continue on. It says, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall, shall be no herd in the stalls. So, this being of no herd and diminishing of these herds and such, this is here in the scriptures. All right, you have it here. Herd, which is a choir, which is cattle, oxen, herd, ox, cattle, all right, bequar, or baqua, bequar, yep, this seems similar to, I believe, the word morning, and bequar, all right, which we have here for the coos and such, cow. Or cow, I say coo and squash tongue. It um Yeah, you see it, no herd in the stalls. You have it where this is going to affect all of the different proteins, all the different aquarium, alright? The, the the different um cattle. Okay. In the stall, so you have to take heat, you know, that this farm is going to happen. A lot of people are going to get cut off and delivered up to, to Mawath and this judgment and destruction because they don't seek Yahweh Bashem Shai. Speaking about Israelites and such, right? Who, as I tell you in the book of Edges, second Edges chapter 8. And it speaks about if I can find it. It speaks about many have received uh, benefits, but not have known the meaning. Speaking about the Yor Yahweh, all right? Maybe in it. Maybe on the ninth chapter. Let me see.
But yeah, this is a uh, second edge is not the one of y'all, but should have a quick with us. So the second edge is chapter nine and ten. All right, I'm gonna start actually up above. It says here, second edge of chapter nine and seven it says actually six. It says even so. Actually, I'm gonna start at verse five. It says for like for like as all that is made in the world world hath a beginning and an end. The end is manifest as it spells in the scriptures that, and better is the ending of a thing than the beginning of it. That's in the book of Ecclesiastes. Okay, the end is greater because. You have at the end of Esau is coming to usher in of a kingdom being translated unto the Israelites, unto Jacob, unto Yahweh Shai. All right, and of course uh, he already have everything, but you know it's going to be, um, gonna be made manifest here on earth, or as it is in heaven. It says even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder, and powerful walks, and endings and effects and signs, and every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works. So it's about having works. All right, Asha. All right, our Aisha, which is work. All right, in Hebrew, all right, our doings. All right, Asha, and you have wa that would be for his. Okay, and by Amalan faith, whereby ye have believed. All right, so when somebody tell you you ain't have to have any works, you have to have works in faith. All right. It says, shall be preserved from the sad perils, these dangerous times which you're coming into, you know. It says, and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. And that's the elect, all right? The elect have been sanctified, predestined from the beginning, all right? It tells you that in the scriptures. That's in. Let's see if I can find a preset real quick. I think of like Ephesians, but. Let's see. We can predestine. Let me see. If I don't find it, I'll just come back and get in another time. How it watch as I get it. Get something at least. Let me see. want to find that predestined but slack you all right well you get the point right there uh how righteous i'll get it in another lesson or right, if a brother leave it in a comment board and such all right and going back was that preset it says uh and then Shall they be in a pitiful case which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments? Yeah, you're going to deathful dwell in torments, casting the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai behind the, these Israelites out there. Okay. Hmm. They don't want to hear the words of Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Okay, they back their hand and such. Okay. And I'm going to get this other precept and close it. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 5. All right, round 12. Jeremiah 5 and 12. All right, I'm going to start here. At, this is actually a... I'm gonna start actually a heed. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring out this is uh, Jeremiah five and seven. It says, "How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me, and ha and sworn by them that are no gods. When I had fed them to the fill, they have committed 
they then commit adultery and they assembled themselves by trips on, in the harlot houses, these various church churches, worshiping these various idols, all right, sacrificing onto these different idols. Okay, of course, we're married unto the Lord, we're exposed unto the Lord, how about Shem Yahshai? So we commit adultery by getting with these other idols. Okay, we're supposed to worship no other God before the Yahweh by Shem Yahshai. Verse 5 it says, and they were fed. And they were as fed horses in the morning, every one night after his neighbor's wife. And sh shall I not visit, visit, f shall I not visit these things, as visit for these things, said the Lord Yahweh, and I shall, and shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? All right, go ye upon. Go ye up upon her walls and destroy, but make not a full end. Take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's. Yeah, take away these battlements. They different. And we go into the battlements. Yeah, branch. Let me see branches. I want to see like a. Battlement. Let me check a different definition. Right. Um. Yeah, fortification. Okay, like a defense and such. They take the different philosophies and such and beliefs. Okay. Taking that, that be their coverance and such. All right, they're taking a covering, but not of the Lord. Yeah, how about you, Masha? It says in the, and it says here, verse, um, our continued on, it says, For they are not Yahweh's, verse 11. For the house of Yahshua and the house of Judah have dealt very treacher treacherously against me, said the Lord Yahweh. They have bellied, bellied the Lord and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us. Neither shall we see sword in our famine. All right, so the Lord is going to bring destruction because you people don't say that these prophecies are true. You don't believe me, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, you Israelites. The heathen are wicked, so judgment must be executed. That's the point, okay? And hopefully you're edified by this lesson. A global uh, food crisis is coming, all right? 2020 is right around the corner, so you better take heed. Obviously, we need to eat pork, it's, but, but this is going to affect the other clean meats as I know it. Hopefully, you're edified. Call on you, Malayah, Habashim, Shabashim, Kakodash, and Double R. Sales, Pasta, Great Millstone. Shalom to you, Lek. Shalom.